Welcome to another episode of the Fire Away Q&A. Today's question comes from Dan, and Dan writes, Hey Corey, I just have a quick question for you. I'm planning my first backcountry elk hunt this year, and I'm trying to figure out how large of a cooler I need for transporting elk meat. I've looked on a few forums, and I've seen guys say two 150-liter coolers, and others say you only need a 110-liter cooler. I have no idea if these guys are telling me the truth or not. What do you recommend? Dan, that's a great question, and I'm gonna answer that for you based on capacity and experience in hauling elk. If you're hunting out of state, or even if you're hunting a long ways from home or a long ways from a meat processor, you're gonna want a cooler to keep the elk meat cool as you transport it, especially during those early seasons, August, September, October. Once you get in November and December, a cooler might not be as important for bringing the meat home, but if you're hunting out of state and traveling across the country, you're definitely gonna want a cooler. There's two things to remember. Number one, if you're traveling and bringing all of the meat still on the bone or boned out but not processed, it's gonna take a different size cooler than if you're getting the elk meat processed and then putting the processed elk meat into the cooler to transport home. So I'll talk about what we wanna do if you're putting the meat directly into the cooler. So I've got three different cooler sizes here. This is the Yeti 210, it's about 210 liters. This is the Yeti 65, about 65 liters, and then the Yeti 160, which is about 160 liters. Now I use this small one mostly for my groceries, and then once I'm coming home, I'll put things like back straps, neck meat, burger meat, things like that in a smaller cooler. And a 65 is more than sufficient for those uh, back straps, tenderloins, neck meat, brisket meat, rib meat, some of the meat that you cut off and can put in a game bag and stuff in that cooler. When it comes to quarters, and if you're bringing out quarters with the meat still on the bone, I'll talk about that capacity. So if you're bringing the, the meat out on the bone, uh, the thing you wanna keep in mind is the length. You're gonna want something that's gonna be able to handle the length of a quarter. An average elk quarter is probably gonna be about 32 to 34 inches in length. So that means if you have a cooler that is 30 inches in length, it's going to need to be fairly deep so that you can angle those quarters across. The Yeti 210, and I've got a measuring tape here just to give you an idea. The Yeti 210 inside dimension in the length is 33 and a quarter inches approximately. So it's going to be long enough to fit a full quarter lengthwise in there for most elk. A big mountain bull elk might have a 36 inch long quarter, but for the most part, 32 to 34 inches. If you cut it off at the elbow knuckle and just have the ham on that rear quarter, which is gonna be probably the longest quarter, it's gonna fit in there. What you're gonna to wanna to do is put the meat, the bulk of the meat of one hind quarter on this end, and then on the other side, take the other quarter and put the bulk of the meat on that side so they're opposing each other. That'll allow them to sit down flat in the bottom, get those two bottom quarters in there, and then you should have room to put the two top quarters, the two front quarters on top of those. So we're a little over 33 inches in length. The width is about 19 and a half. So it's gonna give you plenty of room to get two quarters side by side in there. And then the depth on that is also about 19 and a half. I have fit an entire elk, two hind quarters, two front shoulders on the bone in this cooler. What I didn't have room for was all of the scrap meat. So you need another small cooler for your back straps and, and other scrap meat. It'll fit in here. With that in there, I'm able to take and put a layer of cardboard or two on top of the meat and then put eight or 10 pounds of dry ice on top of it. And that keeps that meat cool. And you can transport it. Once you put dry ice in one of these Yetis, that meat's gonna stay cool in there for a couple of days. So you're gonna be fine driving it across the country, going home, if you wanna process it at home. Now in the 160, the Yeti 160, you'll notice it's longer in length than the 210. So the 160 measures about 38 and a half inches in length. So more than adequate in length for even a big bull. The problem is the width of it is only about 13 and three quarters inches. So it's not wide enough to get two quarters side by side to fit down in there. And then the depth of it, it's uh, just under 17 inches tall. So there's no way you're gonna get four elk quarters in the Yeti 160 just because of the measurement. 
So when you're looking for a cooler to transport an elk, I don't think the capacity as far as the 160 liters or 210 liters is nearly as important as getting one that's the right dimensions. So if you want a cooler that's gonna fit four quarters in it, the Yeti 210 is going to be the minimum that you want with that 33 to 34 inch length, width being 19 to 20 inches and depth being also 19 to 20 inches. That's gonna be the minimum you want to get four quarters. If you want two quarters in there, again, this is gonna fit two quarters just fine and it's gonna be overkill. So something again, 32 to 34 inches long is gonna fit the length of the quarter. And if you just wanna get two quarters in it, something you know, 16 to 18 wide and probably about the same 16 inches tall is going to fit that. For me, it's really handy to have one cooler to get all the meat in. I've got my small cooler with me that I can take the gallon of milk or whatever I have at camp. It's usually gone by the end of the hunt. When I'm heading home, I put the scrap meat in there, put the four quarters in this one, and I come home. And the Yetis are gonna keep them cool with a little bit of dry ice, and that's definitely the way to go. So uh, again, don't put dry ice directly on meat in the cooler. It's gonna freeze or burn it really bad. Uh, put something in between the meat and the ice. We usually take a couple layers of cardboard and put in there. A lot of times we'll bring an old blanket, uh, some kind of a fleece blanket or something to put over the top of it just to keep that separation between the ice and the meat. So you've worked hard, you've been successful, you've got all this delicious organic elk meat. The last thing you wanna do is not have a cooler to put it in so that it goes bad in the back of your truck or have a cooler that it doesn't fit in and the same thing's gonna happen. So hope that gives you an idea. Dan, great question. We get that question a lot. Uh, Yetis have been great coolers for us. They keep things cool. Once you close them up and seal them, if there's ice in there, they're gonna keep that meat cool. You aren't gonna have to worry about it going bad even after two or three days. For the most part, when we're at camp, we're gonna have a meat pole similar to that in the background. We're gonna hang the meat from that. And as long as it's cooling down at night, that meat's gonna be just fine. It's gonna cool down. I prefer to leave the meat on the bone if possible, especially for transporting like this. If you're to bone the meat out and stuff it all in a cooler, that meat on the bottom is not gonna get the same amount of uh, coolness from the ice on top of it because it's trapped down there underneath all this other meat. It's insulated from the other meat. With the meat on the bone, you're able to get that cool air circulating around it a lot better inside the cooler and help it all cool down and stay cool. So great question, Dan. If you have a question about elk or elk hunting, send it over to us at info at elk101.com and be sure to put fire away Q&A in the subject line and we'll do our best to answer that question for you in the next episode of the Fire Away Q&A. The success rate for do-it-yourself public land elk hunters covers around 10%. The reality of that statement is that 9 out of 10 elk hunters each fall fail to fill their tag. Or the average elk hunter only fills their elk tag once every 10 years. But average no longer applies to you. Crush the averages and sign up for the University of Elk Hunting online course today and become a consistently successful elk hunter.